In previous lessons, we've covered the basics and not-so-basics of menu programming. Now we'll be looking at the PosiTouch Time and Attendance module, which allows you to track, change, and evaluate your business's labor. First, we'll look at adding an employee. From the Back Office main menu, select the Time and Attendance icon. We'll look closer at some of these other options in later lessons, but for now, let's simply click on Employees. You will be shown the first employee record in the database. We are defaulted to the Quick Setup screen. Before adding our own employee, let's examine the critical information stored here. In the upper left, you will see the employee number, which is used by the employee to log in to use the system. It may also be used in reporting as an identifier in sorting labor reports. Beside that, a card number, which will associate a MAG card with that employee. In many cases, owners will eliminate punching in via the employee number in favor of MAG cards, thanks to the greater security that MAG cards represent. You'll see that the MAG card presents a long string of numbers. To associate this card with an employee, we will choose the last four digits of the card still within the barcode. Below the employee name and card number are two lines which contain the employee's first and last names. This may also be used to sort reporting or to search the employee database by last name. Below the name are navigation buttons. Previous on the left will take you to the preceding employee record. Next will take you to the employee record following the current one. And GoTo allows you to search by employee number or last name, so there should be little trouble in finding a specific user record. Below the navigation buttons, you will see an option to show active employees only, which will exclude inactive or former employees from your search. Under the general heading, you will see the employee number repeated, then a window for entry of the employee's social security number. This is an optional field, and if you choose to retain this information, ensure that you protect access to the computer to prevent security issues. You will see the first and last name windows, card number, an alternate employee number, often used for payroll software plugins, and the employee type, which may be used to allow or forbid access to certain options in the system. Below that heading, you'll see POS Info. You must flag the POS User option here if you want your employee to use the system. Leaving it unflagged will allow this user to access the Time and Attendance module, meaning he or she may clock in and out, but not access any menu screens. The User Type tells the system which user privileges are allowed. Managers are able to delete items from a check, for example, but a server may not. The user type controls this, along with user privilege codes, which we will discuss in a later lesson. The table assignment and cost center station assignments are rarely used, but allow you to attach a user to a specific position or cost center. Below that POS info heading, you'll see the jobs heading. Here you will assign the job to the employee. Like the user type, the job may be used to define which abilities the employee has in the system's operation. Once we have this information, we have captured all we need for the employee to use the system, but let's examine a few more options. As you see by the heading at the top of the screen and the button on the left, we are on the Quick Setup screen. If I now select the Personal Info screen, you'll find that you can keep your employee records in an entirely digital format. In addition to the name, you can enter the address and phone numbers for contact information. Of particular note here are the fields indicating the date hired, the dates terminated, and the termination reason. Nearby is an entry for the date of the last race for this employee. You can use this information to dispute claims for a terminated employee, as well as to determine the schedule for incremental raises. Again, all of this information is optional, but presents a convenient space to store all employee information. By selecting Employee Status, we are brought to the Employee Status window. You'll notice that the employee type is repeated here and can be adjusted as needed. The employee status dropdown allows us to select if the employee is active or inactive. When marked inactive, the employee may be sorted out of searches of the employee database and it will further disallow use of this number at the terminal. The inactive employee will also be excluded from labor scheduler scheduling. Below, the wage type dropdown allows for us to define the employee's pay rate as hourly, salary, salaried but excluded from labor reporting, or daily salaried. The pay period below will define how frequently payroll occurs, 
offering the ability to choose weekly, every two weeks, twice a month, once a month, or you can instruct the system to always pay a base salary. Flagging the template option on this screen hides the record from reporting and scheduling, but can be used to add new employees of similar type and pay. If you have added an employee but do not see them on the terminals or in the labor scheduler, ensure that the template flag is not checked. The employee tipped option is flagged if the employee will be receiving tips. This allows for calculation of wages above or below minimum wage and also creates a prompt which asks the employee to declare tips on punch out. The enforce schedule option will disallow an employee from punching in or out if the labor scheduler is in use and they are not currently scheduled. We will discuss labor scheduler in a later lesson. For now, just know that this feature is used in conjunction with the labor scheduler feature. The punch out with tables open feature allows the employee to punch out regardless of open tables. This is generally left blank. Use POS without punch in is generally used for managers or salaried employees who do not require punch ins for pay. Servers, bartenders, hosts, etc will rarely use this feature. The pay salary setting must be flagged for salaried employees. The no split shift pay feature is likewise seldom used in a restaurant environment. You will see the jobs and rates fields below also, which are here purely referenced and may not be edited from this screen. If we click on the POS info button, we can edit the name of the employee from this screen, the mag card number, and the user type. Below the user type dropdown, you'll see an option that tells the system not to override by job-based user type. We'll look at this more closely later, but for now, just know that if you are assigning user privileges by job type, you can use this flag to override based on user type. Similar to the quick setup screen, you'll notice that the table and cost center and station roles may be defined for the employee. If I now select the job rate button, I see the jobs assigned to this employee. I can add jobs by selecting Add at the bottom of the screen, or Delete by selecting that button from the bottom. By selecting a specific job from the list, I can click Edit and change the rate of pay under the Rate Update heading, and even schedule when the new rate will be applied from the week and the day updates like so. I can also select the job status via the dropdown and make certain job types assigned to this employee inactive. If an employee has been demoted from the manager to server, for example, I can simply set the management job to inactive, prohibiting the employee from using the system in this way. I can delete a job, but only after no punches under that job title have been made in the past two weeks. Now that we've seen the options, let's set up a new employee. This employee will be a server with an hourly rate of $2.13 per hour. I'll select Quick Setup and then select Add Employee at the bottom of the window. I will be prompted to use the next available number in the database, but I'll define this employee as number 101. I'll then enter the name, last name first, and select OK. My system uses MAC cards, so I'll assign a MAC card number, ensuring I use the last four digits within the barcode, and then I will select the employee type from the drop-down. They are not a manager, so I'll select Regular from the menu. You'll notice that one option reads Select Alternate Job. This is used when the employee has more than one job assigned. If my server is also a bartender and will clock in differently with different wages and or privileges, I must use this option. If you have an employee with multiple jobs assigned to them, but sees only one job upon clock-in, check this setting. I want to flag the option for POS user, as my server will certainly be using the system to order, and now I can re-enter my card number and user type. Lastly, I will use the drop-downs to select my job. I will choose Server, and you'll notice the FOH designation preceding the server title, which is simply the larger department heading under which the job server is defined. Now I will fill in my rate and move to the employee status screen. Here I will leave the weekly pay period as it is, but I will flag the employee tipped option. I will click Save Status, then go back to the Quick Setup screen. I will select Save Employee from the bottom of the screen. And now I will select Exit 
and run an immediate system change to add the employee to the current record. Now when I go to the terminal, I will find that my new employee is able to clock in, access the order screens, and clock out. In later lessons, we will examine the deeper setup to define privileges for individual users. But for now, you have all you need to know to add employees to your PosiTouch system.